Biggie. Yeah. We're back with some uh, some guests today. Yeah. Some pretty guests. Yes, we got a pretty guest today. <laughs> we have my girlfriend, Kim Bridges, and uh, she's here from Bakersfield, and she's going to be filming with us today. I'm going to do part two here on Be Built by Broser of some tweaks on just some basic movements again to just you know just give you some fresh angles some fresh ways to hit the muscle um, sometimes people get bored of the basics so just want to give you some things that might just you know give your training an extra boost so we're gonna have de uh, Kim demonstrate some of these movements and then of course also I'm going to talk a little bit about Ensure Fitness today and a special offer that we have for you guys the trainers and your fitness professionals and hopefully you guys enjoy the show boom okay so this movement obviously is the basic version of a stiff leg deadlift which of course is meant to work the hamstrings also engages the lower back so as you can see she's basically doing it with a very slight bend in the knees she's using a barbell she's stretching forward down towards the toes and she's coming up and what she's trying to do at the bottom is just stretch the hamstrings and then make sure to engage the lift with the hamstrings and not so much with the lower back. So she's trying to keep the tension on the hamstrings all the way down and all the way up. And if you can really think about doing this, you'll get more of a hamstring workout than you will a lower back workout, which is the goal of this movement. Also, as you can see, when she comes to the top, she's not completely locking out. She's keeping the tension by leaning the torso forward just a little bit at the top. And this is how you do the basic stiff leg deadlift. Okay, so now this is the variation on the stiff leg deadlift. A few different things here. As you can see, she's using a low cable rather than the barbell. She also has the balls of her feet up on 10 pound plates. What this does, it helps to better engage the hamstrings than the flat foot position. What she's actually doing, which you can't see, but you should know about this movement, is she's actually pushing the balls of the feet down onto the plates. And when she does this, this again will better engage the hamstrings on the way up. Another difference between this and the barbell is that instead of going straight down towards the floor, down towards her toes, she's actually letting the bar come forward. So it's coming out in front of her, which puts a better stretch on the hamstrings in the basic version. And of course, because we're using a cable rather than a barbell, there is actually more tension at the top of the movement because the cable is pulling back against her. But again, there's also a slight bend in the knees in the movement as she comes down. And as she comes to the top, she's not completely locking out. So she keeps the tension on the hamstrings. This is a very good, great variation on the basic deadlift. If you're not feeling those, give it a try. Okay, so now moving into back, we're doing a very basic version of the close grip pull down, which is great for working the lats. As you can see, she's pretty much sitting up straight. She's pulling the weight down, keeping the elbows close to the body, which is engaging the lats very strongly as opposed to the elbows with the outside. And as she comes down, you can see she's bringing her rib cage up just a little bit, putting a slight arch in the lower back to make sure that she gets a full squeeze of the lats at the bottom. And that is your basic close grip lat pull down. Okay, so now this is a great variation on the close grip pull down. What we have here is an incline bench set at about 45 or so degrees. And she's just sitting into the incline bench and this puts her torso in the perfect position. As you can see, she's already forced to pretty much lean back as she pulls down, getting that arch in the lower back and the chest up high. She's stretching all the way to the top, as you can see. And what this does, it gives you a really, really great stretch at the top of the movement because the weight is actually going up and away from her towards the cable, so it increases the stretch on the lats. And it also keeps your torso very, very stable because it's leaning against the incline bench, so there can't be any cheating whatsoever. And then also, we're just changing the angle of pull a little bit. So again, anytime you do that, you're engaging different muscle fibers. An excellent exercise for the lower lats and the tie-ins where it ties into the lower waist. Okay, so what we have here is a basic front raise. We're just using a single dumbbell, so the palms are facing towards each other. And this is a great way to hit the anterior or the front portion of the deltoid, give it more development in that area, more roundness to separate also the front of the shoulder from the chest. She's just doing this, like I said, with a dumbbell standing up straight, holding either side of the dumbbell, raising the arms out all the way in front of her to about nose level. 
and keeping a slight bend in the arms. Good movement for the front deltoids. Okay, so now this is a variation using the dumbbell. We're using the cables. We're using a rope, again, to mimic the dumbbell. The palms are facing inward towards each other. But as you can see, she's standing in front of the cable about a foot, and she's leaning the torso forward. And what this does is it changes the angle a little bit, and it also increases the pull of gravity. So at the top, she's getting a better contraction than she would with the dumbbell. Additionally, because we're using a cable versus a dumbbell, there is extra resistance at the top. So you may feel this a little bit more direct hit in the front of the shoulder than you will with the dumbbell. Again, another excellent variation on a basic movement. Okay, to work the triceps, we're using the cable here. We're doing a unilateral tricep push down. She's just holding the end of the cable rather than using an attachment. So the palm is basically facing inward towards her. She's leaning the torso slightly forward as you can see. She's keeping the elbow locked into the side. She's going to full stretch at the top, full lock out at the bottom to make sure to get a good squeeze on the tricep. And this is of course just a very basic move for the triceps that's excellent for building size and shape into that muscle group. Okay, so this one I like to call a concentration push down with a single arm. So as you can see, she's leaning all the way forward as you would, as if you were doing a dumbbell concentration crawl, but instead of flexing, instead of ex uh, flexing at the elbow, we're extending at the elbow. As you can see, she's going across her body, across her torso with the, at this angle, rather than just straight up and down to the side of her torso as she does with the basic movement. This actually provides a little bit more isolation, hits the triceps a little bit differently, so we're affecting different muscle fibers, and it's a very, very strict movement. So again, you get that better isolation and a really, really excellent squeeze at the bottom. So give this a try. It's actually a great way to finish off a tricep workout one arm at a time and really, really focusing on getting that squeeze. Okay, to work the biceps, what we're showing here is basically uh, a low cable curl, alternating arms. Of course, you could also do this with dumbbells, as, as you know. But again, there's a very, very basic movement for the biceps that pretty much everybody does. She's basically just standing up straight. She's keeping the palms in towards her body uh, at the bottom. And then of course she's rotating or supinating the hands on the way up to make sure to work all functions of the bicep. She's doing the movement very strictly and slowly, keeping the elbows tight to the body, one arm at a time. And again, just a very excellent basic movement for the biceps for building size. Okay, so now as a variation, Again, we're using the incline bench, which you guys, if you watch the show, know that I love to use. So what we're doing here is we're having her lean her torso forward on an incline bench set to probably about 60 degrees, but you can play with that angle and move it down a bit. And what she's doing is she's keeping the upper arms, as you can see, back behind her a little bit, pretty much in line with her torso. And as she curls, you can see she's keeping the elbow in that same spot. So she's not lifting the elbow forward as a lot of people tend to do. That will work the anterior deltoid. What we're looking to do is focus only on the biceps. Also, by having the arm back behind you in the beginning, you're actually increasing the stretch on the biceps. So increasing that stretch, of course, is a very, very strong trigger for growth. So this is a very, very unique movement. You'll feel a, a very good stretch on the biceps on the bottom and a really good extra tight squeeze at the top, again, because we're using cables. You can't really use, do this movement using dumbbells, so you're forced to use it on a cable. But again, great variation on a movement and a new way to trigger some growth in the biceps. Merlin, it's almost Thanksgiving. It is true. <laughs> and, you, and you're leaving to Florida. I am, I'm, I'm leaving to Florida, and I'm gonna go visit my uh, parents out there. Nice. I'm gonna bring my uh, lovely girlfriend Kim with me. Yes. Keep me company. And uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to it. Of course, I'm gonna miss Golds. Of but, course. But we're gonna miss the bike showing miss up. The bike showing up filming. when we're trying to film and people walking in front of the camera if you watch the video. Oh my God. But yeah. anyway, yeah, so uh, Thanksgiving is coming. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody out there. That's right. So uh, you get a special, um, actually a special deal from, from Introvertness that you want to share with everybody, right? Yes, of course. Um, if you've been watching the videos, maybe or maybe not, you know that I'm uh, you're a full-time employee though. I have a I'm, <laughs> well yeah I have a good a partnership with insure fitness group uh, who absolutely puts out the best uh, insurance 
for any fitness professional from trainers, massage therapists, instructors. Uh, we've talked about that before. You can, of course, go to the website and see all the incredible benefits. Uh, but the main thing I want to talk about today is that right now, from uh, now until uh, the 30th of the month, uh, they're actually offering a $25 off coupon. Uh, that's so better you, than your coupon. That's better than my coupon. <laughs> it's got me beat. Um, so that's from now till 11:30, and of course we'll put up the link that you can use to uh, take advantage Click of that. Yeah. Uh, and um, of course, it's also when you when you are signed up um, and you have a policy, you're also going to get um, exclusive benefits uh, like uh, a free professional website, free business resources, uh, member-only discounts, and then of course you, uh, the use of you know the eBooks and everything that they give you for free, so that you can make sure, like I've said before that you can successfully build your business, learn how to use social media, uh, and just increase your uh, the brand awareness of who you are and what you do. You have a um, lot of articles on the, you write a lot for them, right? Yeah, I actually have, I actually have, um, now what I'm doing with them is I was, I was just doing articles occasionally, yeah. now and again, but now I'm gonna be doing like four, four mini articles a month, which are basically like blog posts, nice. uh, just on different topics on, you know, from the perspective of a trainer, yep. um, how to keep your clients safe, um, what to do with your clients when they go away on vacation or during the holidays, how to keep them on point. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, of course, different, um, you know, just techniques that you can use as a trainer or coach, you know, um, on how to get the most effective workouts for your clients. Nice. So uh, you can check that, of course, on the site as well, which is insurefitness.com, which we'll also put the link up for. Um, and then also that something they wanted me to talk about, and this is really, really great, is that um, they're now offering a monthly payment option um, for people if you don't oh, want okay. to put all the money down. So That's it's good. around yeah. yeah, so it's around sixteen dollars a month, um, which you could do via PayPal. So it's really, really simple. Um, so this way, like I said, it used to just be for students, but now it's for anybody signing up. Oh, it's up. good. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, if you don't really feel it's sixteen dollars a month, nope. and again, we're talking about massive amounts of coverage uh, to protect you and your business and your livelihood. Uh, for a low cost, a very, very low That's cost. Awesome. So make sure that you check out the link, take advantage of the $25 off coupon that we have until 11.30, uh, and uh, check out the website, the resources, and everything like that, because you really can't get better insurance or a better company than this to work beside you. Yeah, all the links are in the description, you guys. So just you know, go in the description and click, take it directly to the site, right? Yeah, so, so yes, absolutely. So on behalf of myself and Shore Fitness, happy Thanksgiving to everybody, and I hope that your holidays are great. Awesome. You have any good question, Merlin? Yeah, good question from uh, actually a client of mine, Jason Carroll. Uh, he wanted to know, in terms of progress season, a lot of people call it off season, which I do not like, it's progress <laughs> season, uh, about what length of time is necessary to build quality muscle before you go back into a cutting phase again for a show? That's the first thing he wanted to know. And then he also wanted to know what my take was on this big documentary that's out there about veganism. Oh, I can't wait to hear this. Game changers. Yes. Okay, so. I will answer both of those questions for Jason. So uh, basically with progress season, um, I think that a good, you know, when you're a competitor, I think that mostly it's really good to compete every year because you need to, you know, show yourself in front of the judges, remain current, practice yourself, you know, being on stage, seeing how you're progressing from year to year. But I think that before you do a show from one show to the next and you enter into progress season, I, I think you need Oh, every time. Every time. But... Terrible. You gotta love those loud ones too, I know, right? dude, the Hardys are the best. So anyway, what I was trying to say is that I think you need a minimum, this is bare minimum, at least a good four solid months of off-season training to put on some size. Preferably, I would rather see it be longer than that. I'd probably rather see it be more like six to eight months of a progress season. Uh, because usually, Jesus. usually when you come out after a show, um, first of all, there's going to be a little bit of lag time. I think that you need a little time for your body to heal, to recover, uh, you know, and that could take really up to a month long. Uh, not to say that you necessarily have to take completely, you know, all this time off from the gym. You have to kind of reverse your diet a little bit uh, so that you come out of the, the diet not putting all kinds of crappy weight. Uh, you also want to take a, advantage of the fact that you can get some a good growth spurt uh, after dieting for so long by adding in the right amount of calories and training the right way. You can get a good growth spurt uh, after a show. Uh, but I think you know to really settle in, 
uh, and to really make really, really quality gains and give yourself the amount of time to really show a really good difference uh, from one show to the next and not really just show up on stage looking exactly the same. Um, I would say four months is minimum, but I personally as a coach like to see at least six to eight months if you're the kind of person who is going to compete every year. Nice, all right, good answer. So Jason also wanted to know what my opinion is on the documentary Game Changer. Um, I have to say that <laughs> personally, I think that it's all just propaganda. Um, did you watch it? I didn't even bother to watch it. To tell you the truth, I heard a lot about it and I yeah. heard you know people's takes on it and everything, but it's not really gonna, I, I don't think that I have to watch it to really know <laughs> because I've seen things like this before. Now, I don't have a, anything against mm -hmm. veganism if that's the lifestyle you choose, if you're using it and you're finding that it works for you and you feel healthy and you feel great, then all more power to you. Now, I'm talking more from a perspective and of athletes and, and, and bodybuilders and people who basically are looking to maximize uh, muscle mass and minimize body fat. Um, you have to remember that people sometimes don't understand the difference between strict veganism and vegetarianism because with vegetarianism, there's a lot of people who will still eat fish, or they'll still eat you know, eggs, or they'll still be okay with protein powder. So there's still, there's still room in their diet for a good, solid, complete protein source. With veganism, you're really not getting that. There's basically no animal proteins. There's no complete proteins. You have to combine all kinds of grains and vegetables and this and that to try to get a complete protein source. Uh, that's the first problem. It's very, very complicated. Second problem is that you know, in doing that, sometimes you know your your whole diet is going to be basically tons of carbohydrates, um, and that's not necessarily good. Carbohydrates can cause issues like inflammation. Um, it can cause you know insulin spikes if you're a little insulin resistant. Um, I think it's very very hard to keep your body fat out of control when you're eating so many carbohydrates at every meal. I just don't I, I just don't believe in any way, shape, or form that it's the optimal plan for somebody who wants to gain muscle, maintain muscle, and lose body fat. In fact, there's been, and again, this is not scientific evidence, but it's, it's anecdotal evidence, but a lot of people even who uh, were on the video or were on the movie or talked about the movie, a lot of athletes have been getting, who got one straight vegan, have been getting injured. Uh, a lot of major injuries. And to me, I just think that this is more proof to show that it's not optimal for people who are putting their body through such strenuous activity uh, to use no animal products whatsoever. So, you know, without going too far into it, again, I have nothing against it if you're using it and it's great. I never argue against something if it's working for you, but I just think that for the majority of people who are looking to, uh, you know, be bodybuilders or, or very um, talented athletes, you absolutely need animal protein. We're made to eat animal protein even our teeth were built to help animal protein. Prehistorically, we're built to. So I think that a balanced diet is always the best method where you're eating some complete proteins, you're eating healthy fats, you're eating vegetables, you're eating some grains. That's always the best approach for everybody. I think it's the most healthy approach and the approach that's going to get people to where they want to be in sports and bodybuilding. Boom.